Hey guys, Sam here from keycommerce.com and today I'm doing another video audit of a Google Ads account. In this video, I'm gonna go deep into this Google Ads account and show you guys all the opportunities and suggestions for this e-commerce store owner. What I will say so far is that this store is a general store, they're drop shipping, and they've set up a Google Ads account with some Google Shopping campaigns um, and to test out a few different strategies. I'm gonna go through and give my feedback and my recommendations of what they should change and what they should implement going forward. So let's jump into it. The first thing I always check, and you'll see this in all my video audits, is I go into the, the conversion tracking, and I wanna check how, they've, how, how have they set up their conversions. So here it is, this is the one that's being used, and it looks like it's uh, they've installed the, the tracking code in their uh, Shopify checkout process. Uh, that's totally fine, I do like to use the analytics um, just because I like to be able to see everything in Google, Google Analytics or and look at the, the business, not just on the Google Ads traffic point uh, standpoint, but also looking at all the different traffic that's coming through from organic, from Facebook, Google Ads, even other referrers, other um, sources, direct linking and stuff like that. Anyway, so what I would change here definitely, this is all fine, except for the attribution model, changes to position based. Now the reason for this uh, is, it, it's very, very important that you change this, I'll go through it now, but I talk about this in a lot of different videos and almost every account I audit has this problem. Now, what is the attribution model? The attribution model is Google's way of assigning conversions to clicks in Google Ads. That's a really simplified explanation. Let me, let me unpack that. So basically it means if someone searches on Google and they search for something that you're selling, maybe shoes, and they search for red shoes, they click your ad, they go to your website, but they don't convert. The next day, they come back and they search again for red shoes. They click on a shopping ad, so a different ad from the first time. They go to your website and they do convert. Well, you've had two clicks and one conversion. So when you look at your Google Ads account, does it, does it show two conversions? Or how does it actually show that? So, well, this tells Google, how do you want to get that conversion and split it up between those two clicks? The current method, means that only that second click gets shown as creating the conversion. Now the problem here is that that first click, someone had to search to figure out who you actually were, to, to see your brand, to see your site, and the second time they came back and they may have seen your ad in the shopping and been like, oh, I saw that yesterday, click on that. They wouldn't have converted unless they had that first ad, even though Google is only gonna attribute that conversion to the second one. This is why last click isn't the best, especially in e-commerce, where a lot of the time, and you'll find this all time and time again, someone, especially when you're building your brand and your, your store, and, and you know, your, your people understand who you are and they come back, what they do is they come back after seeing your, your products, your ad the first time, and they come back and search the next day for your brand, or for, for the product again, but maybe deeper in the funnel, and then they convert. Well, with this, it's only going to show that your brand converted them, when that makes no sense, because that first click, they had no idea who you were, maybe they didn't even know that your product existed, or that your product could solve their problem, and that helped them get into the funnel. So that's why we would change this to position-based. And what this means is that if someone clicks twice, then it splits it up 50-50. 50 to 50. 50 the first click, 50 to the last click. If, if they click three times, it does 40% to the first click, 40% to the last click, and 20% to the click in the middle. Basically it does that. It really gives a lot of value to that first click and the last click, and then spreads the rest out in the for the middle clicks. Uh, most times you'll have one you have one click per conversion, but often, and this click this uh, account doesn't have much data, so but you can check this out by going to attribution here. So tool settings, attribution, I'll show you that in a second. But that allows you to see how how many clicks uh, do people usually make before they actually purchase? So that's why I've changed this to position based. I'm not going to do it now. You can do it later, D, uh, when you when you watch this video. But yeah, I would change that. So if I go over here for this account so far, it's very fresh. I've only had a couple of conversions, but it'll say here zero percent of your conversion journeys had two ad interactions before before conversion. So that's pretty. That's going to be the same as well. But yeah, you, especially if you've got say ten to twenty more hundred conversions, this will be really juicy and generally. A lot of time it's like 20 to 40% for e-commerce, that's what I see generally, depending on how strong the brand is, if you have remarketing set up and that sort of thing. But that's why you would definitely change that so it's not set to last click, even though that's the default that Google sets. Now let's go back to the campaigns. Let's go back here and here so I've got the window set up. So yeah, so that's the first thing I would change. Uh, let, let me go through the rest of the stuff once it loads. 
So we've got all the, the campaigns here. Uh, you've got a, a smart shopping and two shopping campaigns. These are generating conversions. You've paused this one already. Um, it, it's got $200 in sales from $200 in cost in ad spend. Uh, the ROAS is almost one. Uh, you told me that the you're, you're generating almost like 50% net profit on these products. So um, it sounds like you know you, your target ROAS is about two to break even. This one, you know, it's below that. This one's almost there. I'm going to get into the settings in a moment, but I want you to just also understand that at the moment, this strategy here is all very like top of funnel or it's not necessarily top of funnel, but it's just the front end. Like here's the thing that that is really important to understand with digital marketing is that most people when they do digital marketing, they're trying to make a really profitable ROAS off the front end. So they want to, to get someone to click their ad and then within one to two days, they want to make that money back from that person. And that's just one perspective. That's one way to approach your ads. Some of the most successful businesses and brands, they think a bit differently. They go, okay, um, it, it's costing us $1 to get $1 you know, in sales, but then that person is going to come back and purchase another product in one month because we're going to have a remarketing campaign or our product is so good that they're going to be like, oh, I want more of these for my friends or I want to buy some sort of, you know, up, you know some sort of upsell, upsold item, like some sort of bonus or some sort of accessory that adds to it. So keep that in mind, guys, is that a lot of people go into paid advertising thinking, I got to make money straight at the front end. And it happens all the time. You know, that's what we often do, but we're often working with clients and stores to go, okay, so we've got the ad set up and they're breaking even and making profits, often a lot of profits, but not always. It depends on the niche, the products and how aggressive they are and their profit margin and their cost of goods sold. But we'll also say, hey, have you got all your email flows set up? Have you got you know, a welcome sequence for new customers? Have you got a pre a pre you know a pre purchase a post purchase flow? Do you have abandoned cart uh, abandoned cart email flows? Like all this sort of stuff like that. That really it, it takes a bit of time to set up. Once it's set up, it's automated. Uh, but what work are you doing to actually build the long term health of your store? Because once you get those ads set up, breaking even, making some profits. All this other work, like setting up your email marketing campaigns, improving your product pages, and getting the conversion rates up. That's just going to make all that money you're spending on ads work way better in your favor. So something to keep in mind, guys, is that, yep, you're spending money here and you want to tweak this and optimize this as well. But keep in mind that there are different goals that you can have and you want to make a profitable here, but there's so much you can do that no one's teaching and no one's talking about for after the ads. Everyone focuses on ads, which is great, but like when you can spend $1 and get $10 back because you've got all the other ducks in a row, man, you're going to beat the competition in ads every single day because they're just trying to make money on the front end. You're making money from that customer for months and months and months. And this is a long-term approach. But it depends on what your goals are. If you want to build a very successful e-commerce store um, that's generating a lot of lot of cash to, like for you know, years in, in the future, it's worth a lot more money. That's what you do. It takes more time and effort and you've got to learn a lot of stuff to do that. Anyway, I'm, I'm going on a bit of a tangent here, but let's jump into the campaign. So let's jump into t test bucket. I'm going to open these two in particular because they're shopping campaigns and manual shopping campaigns. I can close this one here. Once it loads up, I like to check out the settings first and go through because there are a lot of quick wins there generally. Um, let's jump into the settings and then I'm going to jump into um, other parts of the campaign too. So you, the good thing is you're already getting some conversions, nine conversions here which is fantastic, $450 in, in sales, even though you've spent money, that's, I would be very happy with that because it's, it's already pro proven that these products sell and there are people on Google that are buying your products. From here on out, it's just optimizing and just tweaking it, tweaking it and getting it more profitable. So let's go in here, let's go into the settings. Cool, and you've got a decent amount of clicks too, which is good. Not too many, because it depends on how many products you have and how those clicks are spread out with the data. Cool. So let's check it out. So bidding strategy. I know that some people recommend this. Man, this is it's just it, it's crazy to me that people are using maximize clicks because we'll only use it for our clients for for very specific situations like a branding campaign. Because what happens with maximize clicks is you set a budget and Google goes, okay, how can I get as many clicks as possible? It's exactly what it says here. This isn't me making stuff up. Ex as many clicks as possible within your budget. You can also, you know, cap the bid, which is fine. But think about that. You're telling Google, my goal isn't to make conversions. My goal is to just get volume of clicks. And it's a shopping campaign too. 
So keep that in mind is that you're not setting keywords, they're using your products. Okay, and so think about how this would actually translate into, into results. And we, we find this that yes, maximize clicks can work and it can be okay at the start of a shopping campaign because it can kickstart um, getting data. But honestly, yeah, we don't use this at all. We will recommend manual bidding from the start. I've got a full video on managing your, your bidding. I have provide a full free template that you can download where we run some formulas on all the data. That, and we've used this to, to build up $12 million worth of uh, shopping campaigns. And by the time you're watching this, maybe even a lot more. Um, but we've used it time and time again, and it works incredibly effectively. I would start low, like start with the lower bids, especially if you're running conservative budgets. Um, I wouldn't use maximized clicks. Um, we just use this for branding campaigns, even shopping branding campaigns, because you're, the, the, it's going to basically get clicks either that people just don't want because and they're so cheap, uh, but it's not going to have the goal. You're not going to use Google's. If you're using an automated bidding strategy, you're not using and using maximized clicks. You're not using Google's all that conversion data, uh, unless you know, unless you're using target ROAS or target C, you know target CPA or something like that, where you're telling Google, "Here's my goal." With this, it's really just I would only use this for engagement, as in engagement in the, in the fact that exposure is a better way to put it. Like I want to get my brain in front of as many people as possible, and I don't care how well that converts. But like what's already in your account, you're getting results from it. So it's not like it's, I'm not saying that it's not going to work, but as digital marketers, we need to approach the accounts and going, okay, we have a set of tools here. How, what's the best tool for this job? This is a tool that we can definitely use and it, it, it will get some conversions. But what's the best one we can use for a new fresh campaign to make sure that we get clicks that are valuable clicks, we don't spend too much, and we can start optimizing and directing Google in the settings, negative keywords, in the bidding, uh, on how we want to shape this campaign. And it's a bit of a dance, but that's why there are no set rules, really. Like, you can make it work with maximized clicks. There are no set rules, but have the approach of, you're almost like an investigator. You're almost like a doctor. You know, someone that has a really weird problem that goes to a doctor, the doctor sometimes, if it's a broken arm, oh, broken arm, let's put it in a cast, that's easy fix. And and many of the problems in accounts are like that. Just like I, talk, I showed the conversion tracking attribution model. But many times, um, no one knows, not even Google knows, until you actually start running that strategy. Let's test it out. Let's see if we can get it to work. Uh, and that's our job, uh, basically. Your job, my job, as you're running your own account. How can we use the experience and knowledge that we have? Test, doesn't work. Okay, that's not a good strategy. Put that aside. That's not going to work in this in this situation. Anyway, that's what we do. Um, so I would change bid strategy to manual CPC. I would keep on enhanced because you're already getting conversions. And I'll set the bid. I would look at um, your products, and I'll do that in a second. And you'll work out your actual bid that you can put to make sure it does break even. Uh, budget, don't worry about that. That's fine. Twenty-five dollars. I, I recommend twenty to fifty dollars uh, when you're starting out. Um, just the, the budget. The difference that makes is just the speed in which that you can collect data for your campaigns. Campaign priority doesn't matter because oh, you've got when you have two campaigns running. That does matter because it means that whatever campaign has the highest priority, that's going to be filtered. The traffic is going to filter there, through there first. Uh, but if you just have only one enabled, then that doesn't matter. Search networks. I would turn this off. Search networks, you know, I've explained that in many of my videos, but that's where Google has its other websites. Like, I think, I'm not sure. They don't even pr pr publish an actual list of them. They just say we have partner websites. Um, but there are a couple of other search engines, like Gumtree is one that I know of. I think Yahoo might be on there. There's a bunch of other ones on there, but you don't have any control over that. And it's only once ever in any of the audits I've ever done have I seen search networks actually outperform um the regular Google search, and that wasn't based on volume, that was based on the actual profitability. They always have lower search volume, and I'm gonna actually show you right now how you can check this. So you go to segment on your campaign level, go to network, you'll see it, Google search, and then search partners. So barely any clicks, three and 11 clicks for each of those campaigns. Um, look, at the, look at the CTR, it's so low. That's not that bad between these two, um, but it's generally lower. It hasn't had any conversions for either of them. It probably hasn't enough clicks to even get a conversion, but generally we see that that performs worse. Um, you can test it out. I prefer to test that later once we've already got the campaigns profitable. When you're starting off, you want to just focus on how can I get this profitable as soon as possible. Let's cut all the the, the, the poop, like crap. Like let's just get rid of all this other stuff. Focus on Google shopping campaigns, uh, just raw. Get it, get it going, and then later we can test stuff out. Let's check out locations. Great, you've got that set. That's what I always check there. I think that's all good. Um, so I'd only change that search um, search network as well as the bidding strategy. 
what I'll do is I'll also check the other one as well because maybe you have different settings for each. So it would be a really good idea to check them. So it loads up. Cool, maximize clicks, definitely change that. Yep, same, change that. And that's good too, awesome, yeah, great work for those. Okay, let's now jump into the actual ad group. So you've got one ad group, awesome, and you're using maximize clicks, so you won't be able to edit the bids except for at the, the whole campaign level. And you're getting some conversions. I think that's really, really awesome. Um, let's have a look at how much, so you've got clicks. So for example, this one here, so we excluded this one. So yeah, so what you've done is you split them out, you, like we've split them out here so we can see how each product is performing. That's basically what I'm doing. I didn't explain that, but that's what I'm doing here. And you've excluded this product here. It's only spent $42. And I believe this one here, you told me that the profit on that is $24. You really need to figure out, for, this, is, this is part of testing and deciding when do you pause tests. So for example, if you start running a campaign and it spends $200 and doesn't get a conversion, you need, to, you need to stop and think, okay, uh, is that a bad thing? Okay, so this is what I'm trying to explain here. If your product sells for $10,000 and you make $1,000 profit, then if you've only spent $200, that is so small compared to the actual profit you could make that just one, the next click could be a conversion and then boom, you've made a massive profit of $800 on that, that campaign already. You see what I mean here? So for every single test that you're running, every single strategy, you need to have some sort of break even cutoff point. For this, the problem with maximized clicks is that you don't have the control to start reducing bids if it isn't converting. So all these people for this product may be going to your, to that page, they're not converting. Um, they, so they go to that page, they're not converting, um, and instead of just cutting it off, it might the next person might actually convert and then the 84th click, um, but you didn't know that because you cut it off. But that So if the 84th person it converted, that then makes the cost per conversion $42, um, that's more than the actual profit generator, but it's only a, like a little bit more. It's not huge. So in that case, it's like, okay, well, how long can we test these? And I would recommend we use, it depends on who we're working with and if it's our store or not, Like, but generally three to five times the profitable CPA for that product. So say if the product costs $50 or it's selling it for $50, you're making $25 in profit for that. We'll say, okay, if we spend $75 to $100 on this, it's not converting then we'll consider excluding it. But there are many more things you can do before you actually exclude it. Like if you're using manual CPC, you can reduce the bids, which is gonna make you less competitive in the search results. But, and so you're gonna get less volume. But when you do get a conversion, as long as that those clicks are just as high, like as, have a high, just, as long as those clicks have the same conversion rate as the clicks when you're more competitive, if that makes sense, if I can read that well. Basically, you can reduce the bids still get the same conversion rate of say 3%, whatever it is. And, but your CPA, your, the actual cost of acquisition is much lower because you pay less for those clicks. The only disadvantage is that you're getting less volume. So it means on a monthly basis, instead of getting 10 conversions, you might get three. It really depends. So that's how you can actually play with the levers that you have access to in Google Ads by adjusting your bids to be able to make your campaign profitable by having the same products, the same product page, just by adjusting the bids. But like I said, it comes at a cost of volume because the higher you bid, the more likely, you know, the higher your ad rank, the higher, the, the, the higher you're going to show up in the search results, which is going to result in more clicks because people will often click the top, the top spots, which means as long as it's profitable, you're going to get more volume and you need to decide for yourself because you have your own fixed expenses and all this sort of stuff. You might need 30 sales, 30 orders per month to make it worthwhile. Uh, and so you're, you need to make that so you can't drop to 20 orders. So you see, there's a lot that goes on here. Anyway, uh, what I would do here is that I would change the manual CPC and then I would start bidding based on the profit, like based on how they're performing. So um, check out that, that bidding video I did. I'll put a link in the description as well. But you can see here, I've ordered by return on ad spend, which is conversion value divided by cost. And this one here is absolutely killing it. You know, that's 23, row as of 23. It's only had 12 clicks though. So that's the thing, it may not be statistically significant, but like that's that's absolutely awesome. That's incredible. And the average CPC is 52 cents compared to this one, which is 54. This one's 46, 52. But even if you look at this and go, okay, well I'm spending on average 52 cents per click when this one is generating a better ROAS than this one, but I'm paying more for this one. See, see how like that might not make sense depending on how much profit you're making. You wanna bid 
based on the return, like based on how much it's actually making you. So then I would start adjusting those bids and, and uh, I would actually increase the bids so you'd be paying maybe a dollar for these, these um, products here. That's what I would do and test it out because you've got a lot of room here as long as you can maintain the conversions. You've, you've got two conversions from this one from 12. That's epic, that's insane, that's really, really cool. Um, so yeah, that's what I do, $140 in sale in revenue from $6. <laughs> See what I mean? But uh, yeah, you've only had a few clicks, so maybe it was a fluke, maybe it wasn't. Maybe your conversion rate actually is 16%, which would be pretty awesome. Um, but yeah, that's what I would do. Uh, change it to manual, start managing those bids. I haven't looked at the search terms report yet, but that's huge, looking at negative keywords. So you've gone very, very exact match, which is fine, but that's like a very sniper approach. Um, you've also excluded this, have you done that as a negative keyword? Wait, I think you did, I saw that. Yeah, so that's the thing is that this is a bit of a mistake. So you've got 20, only 23 clicks, which means the conversion rate would have to be four to 5% to convert on that, on that term, but you've added it as a negative, even though that's directly related to what your product is. So that could actually convert, um, you've just excluded it. So it's only spent $11, uh, yeah. So I think that that's getting very, very granular. Um, yeah, I would, I would, I, Negative keyword uh, mining is a real art. Um, yeah, I'm not sure what your logic is for adding all these in here. If you add it in there, that's gonna be the exact same because of how Google uses the keyword match types and use lumps very uh, slight variations amongst the same uh, negative keyword. But uh, yeah, that's what I would do. I would start there. Here's the thing. You're already getting some good conversion data in the door, which is fantastic. Like I'd be very, very happy if I was you. You just need to keep optimizing, keep moving things in the right direction, optimize those bids, and just, what I would do is once you start getting some really good, like couple of conversions on those distinct products, pull that product out and put it into its own campaign and give it its own budget. Then test with the same similar bid that you were using before, uh, that's profitable. Um, bring over the negative keywords for that product as well, that's important. And um, I would start focusing on, you know, having almost like product categories as campaigns, and dedicating specific budget towards those products that are con uh, performing very, very well. I think along with that, I would start building out other campaigns that are better for the long-term health of your business. Let me, let me explain this. So just like I said at the start of this video about looking long-term, even just on a paid media buying life cycle and going, you're just getting people in the funnel right here and people aren't clicking ads twice yet. It's actually a good thing if people click multiple ads because it means you're able to get them, you're able to show your products and get your brand in front of them later after they've had some time to think about it. If they don't convert the first time, I want to get in front of them tomorrow. When they come back to Google, I want to get in front of them again. So I would set up some dynamic uh, remarketing ads to get your products, see if they look at a certain product, like a weight vest, get that in front of them again on the display network. It pulls in your data from Merchant Center with shopping. It's really, really awesome. They convert really well. They're super easy to set up. I'd also set up some banner ads as well, get them made. You can use Banner Snack, some, um, some software. I'll put a link in the description to that one as well. But I would get that stuff set up uh, and get those display campaigns going and segment your audiences. So if people visit a certain product that you're really targeting <clears throat> and focusing on, then go, okay, well, I'm gonna show ads about that product to them later on and then keep a really close eye on the placements for those ads, um, the audiences and bid according to the intent and like how deep they are in the funnel. I would also create some uh, remarketing list search ads, RLSA ads. They're a bit of a, a more advanced strategy, but I've recommended them before. They're absolutely fantastic um, in cases where people come back and keep searching for the same product. And then you wanna show not just shopping, but search ads, but only if they've already visited your website and your brand. These, generally we see the re return on ad spend of like 11 to 20 plus. They don't have a high volume, but they're, incredible at making sure that you make the most and squeeze the most profit you can out of this initial traffic that you're already getting. Um, on top of that, I would also recommend giving it time. Don't run in and try and change things every single day. Shopping campaigns, then they, you know, they need time to cook. Google needs to figure out what your story is, what your products are, and who to show those products to. You're getting conversion data already, so don't get antsy, just like wait let it keep basically indexing and figuring its algorithm out using um, the data it has because it's only just, it's gonna get better. Like if you just leave it and let it go uh, and keep going up like that. Um, I think it's a really good start. I had a look at your website. I won't show it here 
Um, but I, I, your website looks really, you've, you've done a lot of great work on your product pages. You just need to do the work on the traffic side. And uh, I would also think about, I would also think about um, the, your audience and the problems that you're solving. And this is something I say a lot just because I think it's a huge problem in drop shipping, which is people getting obsessed with the product rather than what the product does to actually help people. And what I mean by this is that people buy the product for a reason. They don't, they don't just look at it and go, oh, that looks cool, I'm gonna buy that. Like, yeah, that happens, but it's because it also solved the need where it entertained them or in some way or another. You know, a lot of these products that you're selling, people are searching for a spe- with a specific problem, like a weight vest. I wanna buy a weight vest so I can go exercise, maybe in my home, do, do a weighted pull-ups and stuff like that. So really taking the time and thinking about how can you communicate your product to these people with paid ads and your product page and the remarketing, the emails that you set up to best solve their problem. And that's when you'll see crazy results. No one's teaching this at all. This is like agency level stuff that we do with clients and we do with our own store and it works really, really well. Uh, But something I would would stop, watch my other videos and I would think about that too. Anyway, thanks Steve for for the, the account. I loved auditing it, it was great fun and I wish you all the best. I'll speak to you soon. Bye for now.